welcome back so in the last lecture we talked about uh, uh, the strike uh, and dip that is the attitude of rocks okay. and we also discussed about the true dip and apparent dip now usually what uh, you will see uh, in terms of the symbols in most of the what we can call the geological map or the structural maps okay which will be made available uh, to you or maybe uh, already published uh, maps which are required to be uh, uh, looked at and examined before uh, the, the any site is uh, considered for the construction so you will find some symbols were very common okay which you should make note of is the strike direction and the dip direction so you will have an uh, symbols like t okay uh, so this is these are the symbols which will be given for example you are having vertical beds so you can just put uh, the the cross lines okay and then uh, a circle with the the cross line where you will see that the attitudes are not seen mostly their the beds are horizontal okay so for example this is again a plan view and you are marking two beds uh, which are inclined in different directions okay so if you consider this as a north so one bed over here is your north south and another bed is having an slightly different orientation that is a strike okay and if you have the information of the dip then you can put uh, this information that your uh, uh, this bed so this is a symbol you are having okay of uh, uh, the strike and dip okay and then you are having the the direction that is your north so you have uh, you have this north 30 degree east and then you are having 25 degree that is your amount and you have northwest is the uh, the direction in which you are having the dip okay so northwest will be this one okay. this is your northwest this is your east west here like this okay so keeping this in mind you can even uh, uh, read out the maps in a way that how the informations are been given okay and this is uh, totally north south orientation uh, that is your strike and you are having 20 degree uh, north east okay so that is in dip uh, direction and 20 degrees your amount of dip okay now parts of folds as uh, i uh, discussed uh, uh, like what is anticline and incline so if you look at the anticline part we have different parts of folds like we have uh, two limbs okay and then we are having uh, the hinge line and we have the axial plane and we have the fold axis okay now these are important uh, for example because i'll i'll talk in terms of we have been asked to put in tunnel then it is extremely important that what is the uh, the axis of the uh, the fold okay in which direction it goes because in nature it will not be always possible that you will have a very straight hinge line okay that is absolutely not possible in terms of uh, so for example you are having uh, uh, the fold which you see uh, in from the front okay or from the top you will be able to make out the the hinge line okay so and then the fold is going like this okay fine so what you are able to see is that your hinge line is changing okay the direction or the uh, the orientation of the hinge line is not exactly the same okay so that will help you in aligning your tunnels or if you are talking about the roads also okay so this is very important part that uh, that we should know and keep in mind while interpreting the satellite data okay that is the limbs and hinge line okay that whether both the limbs are dipping uh, uh, having the same amount of dip or one is inclined one is not okay and then what is the axis okay because the another part which i can talk it uh, like give a talk on that if possible but i have already covered in one of my uh, course that if you are putting a going to put a tunnel here okay will be in a very bad idea okay because the rocks 
at the center that is what we call the core of the fold will be under tremendous pressure. Okay. So, this is the excavation of this area will be extremely difficult. Okay, fine. So, this is another uh, important uh, uh, part which one has to take into consideration. Second, that what is the strike of the of the fold, okay? Because you cannot put it in the center. Like for example, this is not advisable. Then what you will do? You will put because you have to cross the fold. Then you will have to put your tunnel somewhere here in the limb limb side, okay? Now you will avoid that if the the beds are dipping higher, their inclination is very high. You need to avoid that, okay? Second, the color variation which has been shown here is indicating different type of rocks okay because when you when we were talking about that we are having the horizontal beds and this beds okay are will will be of different lithology so you are having different type of rocks the the composition of the rock is different hence the strength of the rocks will be different okay so that has to be uh, studied well in detail before you select the, the site okay now, if that you know and the another part important part is that you need to know the thickness of the bed okay, or thickness of that particular strata. So, if you if you for example, you, you put your tunnel here, then how laterally that is along the strike this bed will behave okay, or maybe extend. So, if you are axial plane or the fold axis is very much straight okay then you will say okay fine you will align your tunnel in this direction okay fine where you will excavate the same or the similar material or the rock okay suppose you give an alignment somewhere like this okay then you are moving across the fault which is not at all advisable this is advisable why because you are going to come across different type of lithology and depending on the strength of the rock or the material you will have to apply different techniques to strengthen the wall of the tunnels okay. so again there will be a problem in terms of the seepage and all that you will have lot of problems okay so best is that if you find a thicker bed and which is aligned along the axis of the fold that is the best portion where you can put the, the tunnel or you can align the tunnel ok. So, this is one of the, the portion which I have already covered, but if you want maybe you can send the request we will cover this in one of the lecture ok. So, part of the folds we have hinge line, we have limbs and we have axial pane as well as the axis of the limbs, the, the side of two fold is called the flanks or the limbs okay hinge line is a line of the maximum curvature in the folded beds fold axis is a line parallel to the hinges okay so if you connect all the points of the uh, the along the hinge line that will give you the fold axis okay and as i told that fold axis may not be exactly straight or aligned in same direction okay it may curve okay it may take curve or it may be in the different direction because in nature it is not always possible that you will have and completely align uh, okay now we coming to the other part is the axial plane okay axial plane is the surface connecting all the hinges it may be straight or curved okay vertical or inclined the attitudes of axial plane is defined by the strike and its depth okay of any structure so, this is again a similar attitude. Okay. So, for example, here the axial plane, what you will be able to mark here is that the axial plane is almost vertical, it is not inclined, but it has an strike. Okay. So, you will have a strike of the axial plane or the fold axis, but you do not have any attitude. Okay. Now, suppose you are having an, uh, uh, the fold something like this. Okay. and your axial plane is running like this
So, what you are having here is that you have this is this will be a strike, but you are having the the axial plane is inclined. Okay. So, you will have again the depth direction 1 and then you will also measure the amount of depth here. So, that will be what we call the attitude of the axial plane. Okay. Now, this is what you will come across the hinge line. So, the point if you connect the line along the points of maximum curvature that will give you the hinge line and of course, you can if you connect this this is an hinge line and the axial axis or the axial plane will be if you draw it across it. Okay. So, that will be your axial plane. So, this is an syncline this is an anticline here. Okay. Now, this is very important and interesting this is an uh, the figure from one of the paper by Dalkaila which uh, uh, is been from Himalayas, but this also you can easily uh, extract the information. Uh, this is how one can uh, even look at uh, the fault. Okay. Now, because in interpretation of the landforms, we will bring the combination of that how the, the drainages look like, because if you are having any inclined surface and if you are having uh, uh, the rainfall or the precipitation in that particular area you will try to see uh, the development of the streams or the drainages. Okay. As for example, people are very much keen in finding out on Mars or on the surface on different planets, whether they were they are having the, the water there or not and if they find some sort of an channels or the small streams, then they are very excited talking about that oh fine this, this uh, planet might be having water in the past or presently they are having the and the similar climate like earth and all that. Okay. So, any inclined surface if you have okay, then that will always result into the formation of the drainages and if you are having the, the precipitation. Okay. Now, this is a very simple way to identify the fold or the inclined surface because the streams or the water will flow along the slope. Okay, fine. Now, for example, if you are you have extracted the drainage from the satellite data and you want to put uh, the, uh, the hinge line or maybe you can say the axis of the fold, you can easily put that okay. and that is what we call the, uh, the hill range divide. Okay. So, this is the top here and then this side since the surface is dipping this side you will have the drainages which are forming on the side. So, from the top view if you see what you will be able to see suppose there is an fold boundary or you are having the anticline then you will have the drainages which are coming here and flowing this side these are the drainages which are coming here and flowing in another direction. Okay. So, what you are able to see is that there is a clear cut divide over here okay. and the streams are flowing in this direction, streams are flowing in this direction. Again we will take into consideration the, uh, the smaller order streams joining the higher order and that will mark the direction. Okay. So, here if you see in this, this is your hinge line of the fold and as I told this is not straight. Okay. This goes here and then you can able to see you are able to see some probably it is it, it goes like this okay. and another one is over here. I okay. will repeat this when we are talking more on this part and I will show that how clear it is to mark this. Okay. So, you are having the streams which are flowing in this direction which are flowing in another direction. Okay. So, this is one way to identify the different landforms okay, uh, on the on the surface. Okay. This we will do one exercise where we will talk about that how we can easily make out the different landforms based on that okay, based on the drainage pattern also that what we can say. So, usually the folds are classified on the basis of one that is the inclination of the axial plane and then certain the orientation of the limbs. Okay. Now, this is important because you will be able to uh, when you will interpret the, the satellite data, you will 
talk about whether the, the folds are symmetrical folds or it is asymmetrical, but that is if one limb is dipping uh, with a higher angle as compared to another one, then you will uh, mark that as an asymmetrical folds. Okay. And then of course, the stratigraphic position of the stratas. Okay. So, stratigraphic position the next slide we will we'll talk about. So, these are the main three points on which you will be able to classify the, uh, your folds. Okay. Whether it is an anticline or syncline, whether it is symmetric or asymmetric that you will be able to do. Okay. Fold strata, anticlines and synclines, okay. these two types of folds are most often found in adjacent to one another. Okay. So, this will go side by side. If you are having anticline, you cannot say that you will not have synclines. Okay. So, you will have anticlines, you will have synclines, both you will see. Okay. Then the other point which we were talking about that based on the stratic, stratigraphic okay, of the strata, because what the thumb rule says is that the, 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 the first deposition will take place and then another will come and another will come. So, that you have in stratigraphy. So, older, younger and youngest. Okay. So, if you fold that, you will be able to see the, uh, uh, the up and down like, like stratigraphic location or the, the uh, place or the position of that particular strata. So, coming to that both are the example of ductile deformation. Okay. Both are commonly due to horizontal compressional stress. This is what you will see okay, fine on the, on, on the surface and the section. Okay. So, you have anticline. So, these are marked by hills or the hill ranges and then you are having the synclines okay, which are the intermountain depressions between the two. Okay. This is what you can say okay, fine and some place you will say that this is a very symmetric anticline okay, because both the limbs are dipping away from on one another with an same angle. Okay. So, amount of dip is very much similar. So, you can say that this is this is an asymmetrical anticline, but suppose you are having something like this. Okay. So, what you can put is because you will of course, connect the hinge line here and then axial plane if you have to draw you will put somewhere here. Okay. So, this is your axial plane where the axial plane here will be somewhat like this. Okay. So, this is almost vertical, but here you are having an inclined uh, axial plane. Okay and my hinge line will be somewhere here. Okay. So, incline, so this will become and either you call an overturned fold or an asymmetrical anticline which has been shown here, okay, because with, uh, with some amount of inclination if you have, okay, then you will be able to get into the, uh, the overturned fold. Okay. Again here if you put the, the actual plane, you will come across somewhere here. Okay. So, this you will be able to gather only by satellite data interpretation that can be done. Okay, fine. So, if you are unable to even see the section, because one portion of or the one side of the fold for example, this will be steeply deepening and one will be gentler. So, you will be able to make out based on the drainage network also, because steeper the part you will have shorter the distance of the streams okay. and gentler the part you will have the drainages are spreaded and covering larger area. Okay. So, this is another important part which you can you should keep in mind when you are viewing the terrain from space or we can say using the satellite data. Okay. So, this is a sectional view of anticline where you are having different beds. And if we keep it with keeping in mind that this was the oldest because this is uh, this was deposited first and then further you go up with the younger ones. Okay. Then for anticline we can also say that the older ones are in the core and the younger ones are at the outer side. Okay. And in terms of the syncline it is exactly opposite. Okay. The younger ones are in the core and the older ones are in the, the curvature side. Okay. So, this is this is the completely in opposite things which you can see and if you if you carefully look at here. Okay. So, what you are having the older ones are here. So, if you move here the younger ones are at the top, but here 
young younger ones are in the core and the older ones are in the core in the in terms of the anticline okay. So, anticline is in fold which is convex upward okay. axial plane is vertical two limbs dip away from each other at the same angle. So, if you are same angle then this you can classify as an symmetrical anticline okay. Older rocks are in the core that is center okay. Now, in terms of the syncline you have the convex side is downward the younger rocks are in the core that is center okay, and it looks like something like this. Okay. So, if both the limbs both the limb angle are similar with respect to the vertical axial plane then they are known as symmetrical anticline okay, or symmetrical syncline. So, this is another example of the section again you can identify this that you know, how the syncline and anticline looks like and as I told that along this goes side by side. So, you will have anticline you have syncline and you will have also fractures here or the faults. Okay. So, this is a fault here and you can view if there is a movement or identify if there is a movement along this faults on the surface okay, the surface manifestation. So, this we will talk in the next uh, lecture that how we will use uh, the whatever the information we have learned to identify uh, the folds, anticline, syncline as well as the, the faults okay. and what are what, what why we want to identify such features or the geological structures and what uh, role it will play in, in terms of the, uh, the societal benefits. Okay. So, I will stop here and we will continue in the next lecture. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.